Hey everyone, thanks for watching Dee Dee Croy with my favorite groomer on YouTube. So I just got off the phone, it's like 6.14 p.m. I just got off the phone with a client of mine who I've been grooming her two papillons for years now. And she said, Dee Dee, I've got some advice I need. Do you have time to talk? I said, of course I do. And she said, uh, Cassie, one of her papillons, small dog, uh, both of them are... I want to say around nine or ten so they've gotten older I've groomed them for at least five years now I believe maybe even longer than that excuse me I have to burp sorry okay so uh, as dogs get older and this is maybe in one of my other videos but as dogs get older their their bodies change just like ours so you might have a dog that you've never ever had to do an anal gland expression and uh, as a groomer I've been trained by a veterinarian to do internal anal gland expression matter of fact I remember the day he said do not touch the anal glands if you're not going to do them like this and it isn't a wrong or right way of doing it it's just two different types of ways it's being done and because I know how to do them internally now, and you know, back since 2005 ish, no, like 2003 or four, since I know how to do them internally by this veterinarian, I get it. Like if you if you don't know about anal glands, I wouldn't mess with them. I, I honestly wouldn't. PetSmart, um, and I love PetSmart, you know, for what they've trained me to do and taught me and everything like that. But what what they didn't train me to do is anal glands. They were like basically push back there you know, apply pressure and that was it. So that's not good enough training for anal glands. No offense, but you need there. It might have changed. I haven't worked for PetSmart in many years, but, and people change like the trainers and stuff. So this is not, I'm not down talking PetSmart. I'm just saying, look, if you don't know what you're doing with, with anal glands and you feel hesitant, don't do them because you may cause more damage than anything. Anyways, her two pets, uh, Butch last year had a anal gland rupture and so every, uh, we, and I know how to tell how full they are and then I chart them and then we get to a point where I know how full, how, how often we should do it before they get too full. So her, her butch is on every three months we do an anal gland or every other time we do an anal gland expression. She comes in for grooming every month. On Cassie, we've never done an anal gland expression. Something's changed now. Abruptly today, she's got a puffed up anal gland and some blood's involved. She calls me. She wants advice. I'm saying, I will stop what I'm doing and meet you right now and go do an anal gland expression. Um, but hold on. Let me check some things. It's six something at night. Not all the vets are open. Is your vet open? You know, that kind of thing. She does. She calls her vet. I call the vets I know specifically that might be open in the evening because I know a lot of veterinarians. She calls her vet. I call my two vet sources and her vet is able to get her in. Uh, my two vet sources, um, one of them... Well, I'll just mention, I won't mention him. One of them said, hey, Didi, you know, uh, don't do an internal anal gland expression. Let the veterinarian see it. Since there's blood involved, there's definitely an infection. This is a lady over the phone telling me this. She wasn't the veterinarian. But anytime blood is involved in the rear end, just leave it alone, right? So I'm glad I called so that I wouldn't have met Jean and gotten her dogs in. Uh, or Cassie in and done an anal gland expression. It's kind of just like um, when I do the ear inf ear infection dogs and I'm like, whoa, 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 I can't help you here. So I really do need you to see a vet. Or if I can help you, then I can uh, tell you the steps to do because I've learned that through working at vac uh, veterinarians, right? Tell you the steps to do with the solutions that are um, uh, that are sellable from me. So the key is here is that I just want to share this with you as a groomer and a consumer. If you're, if you're looking up anal glands or bursted anal glands, exploded anal glands or anal glands that are infected, this is going to be that video that you might want to want to listen to. Um, so I might as well just go into more detail now. So right now, Jean's vet got her in. It's, I can't believe they got her in. It's 6.18 p.m. on a Friday night. So um, great vet to get her in. Um, I told her to let me know what's going on and that way I can... I love educating myself and keeping myself abreast of all the things that happen with your with the pets of my clients. And that way I can make a note to her chart. They got full, they bursted, or they just got infected. She got on an antibiotic, whatever happens. And then I also ask, well, how much did you spend? So I know where to send other people. And all, and all this is knowledge that you're going to use with every client you have at some point. So make sure you keep track of all this stuff, right? But anal glands, this is my opinion. This is how I've learned. This is what I feel is the way I like to uh, function and do business when it comes to anal glands. Every dog has anal glands. Every dog doesn't need them expressed manually by someone like me or a veterinarian. Uh, there's some ways that they're gonna show you that they need an anal gland expression, scooting the honey on the floor more than once a month. I feel like 
even on my own dogs, if they only scoot once and they're done, great. If they scoot every week, then we've got issues. I mean, they might need some help. I think I might need to move here in a second. Okay, he's not ready yet. I might be able to wrap this up. Nipping or chewing the tail. Funky fishy odor from the rear end. Like a dog running around and all of a sudden he whips back and he's just like, and no one's back there, but he looks at his tail like something just pinched him. And that happening regularly. Um, a fishy odor from the rear end. It's very, very fishy. It's very like foul and fishy. It's not air. It's not gas. It is a fishy odor. And the last sign is, I've learned this over the last two years, is that some dogs will absolutely do nothing. Just like Cassie. Does nothing. No signs. No buildup. No pressure. All of a sudden, there's just blood. And then she's walking around with her tail tucked and she's in pain. So, you just never know what you're going to get into. As your pets get older, you want to make sure... I'm going to back up here. You want to make sure you're keeping an eye... Sorry guys. This vehicle is in demonstration mode. Connected by Oscar Vehicles in demonstration mode. Okay, so you just want to make sure that you are Let me turn this off. Sorry about that. Um So dogs change, they get old, their bodies change. Um their systems change. It causes all these changes in their body, so you want to be aware of it. The veterinarian told me, I'm glad I called, don't mess with the anal glands. If there's blood involved, let the veterinarian take care of that. That's good knowledge for all y'all as well. Pet parents, uh, things can change with your dog. If you see them scooting, tweaking, you know, uncomfortable, not doing well with their anal glands um, area, then, you know, you're, you might have to make some changes, you know. So be aware of these things. And uh, I'll do a second anal gland video and, and capture some of the insight of things I've learned with anal glands later. Thanks for watching my favorite groomer on YouTube.